As Shakespeare once said, there is a tide in the affairs of men which, taken at the flood, leads on to fortune. Well, I'm sure this is true for all of us. Life is full of opportunities, and whether we take advantage of them or not, they can still affect the course of our lives. I'm here today to ask people to recall their particular golden chances. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Oh, hello, Honky Tonks. How are you? <laughs> Very well, thank nice you. Nice to see. Thank you. I wonder, have you ever... Um... Hello, Clarence. How are you? Oh, hello, Greg. <laughs> I wonder, have you ever missed a golden opportunity? Yes, I have. And if I stand here talking to you much longer, I shall miss another one. <laughs> Uh, excuse me, Warden. Oh, yes? Tell me, have you ever had an absolutely golden opportunity? Oh, yes. I had one only yesterday. Really? Yes, there was this car sitting at the meter, two pound excess, tyres were worn, road fund licence out of date. <laughs> Perfect it was. I had my book out. The owner was hurrying across the road towards me. <laughs> I got him. Yes? Just my flaming luck. Got knocked down by a bus. <laughs> is your car? Uh, well, yes, as a matter of fact, it is. Excuse me, Vicar. Oh, hello, my charm. Hello, sir. <laughs> Tell me, have you ever had an opportunity and made a decision which turned out for the best? Oh, indeed I have, yes. One such springs to mind immediately. I once had the opportunity of saving a young lady of my acquaintance from being amorously assaulted and smothered in violent and passionate kisses. How did you do that? I managed to talk myself out of it. <laughs> Excuse me, madam. Excuse me. Miss. Oh, miss. Mm. I'm asking people about making the most of life's opportunities. Oh, don't talk to me about it. I was once engaged to a man who took me on holiday to Morocco. An Arab offered to buy me for a couple of camels. Sure, that was an opportunity your fiancé firmly resisted. Yes, he did. Until he made him agree to throw in a couple of saddles. <laughs> he married. Uh, well, oh, good. Not I'm looking for something I like to oh, talk about, madam. No, oh, please. No, not the against the fence. Oh. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Oh, hello. <laughs> Do you ever feel that you've missed anything in life? Yeah. I never learnt to drive. Well, that's no great handicap, surely, not being able to drive. It is when you're a car thief. <laughs> Excuse me, miss. Hello. Hello. Here's a charming young lady. Oh, thank you. Tell me, have you ever been presented with an opportunity that could change your life? Oh, yes. Do you know, only last week my boss called me into his office and told me he had something in mind that would do me a lot of good. You mean something that would enlarge your prospects? Pardon? Oh, something that would tickle your fancy. You are awful. But I like you. So you see, it's a fact that opportunities do occur for all of us practically every day, whether for good or for bad, who can say? But the greatest gift is to be able to recognize them when they do happen. So when Ernie's governor offered him his caravan, I said to Lil, well, it's an opportunity you can't miss. I said, off, off you go. That's typical, you jokes. Yes, mind you. I welcome having a week on my own. Well, you always was the independent sort. You getting on all right? Yeah. Well, doesn't it look as if I'm getting on all right? Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> I mean, I, I go to bed when I like, I get up when I like, I eat when and where I like. <laughs> that's true, that's true. And I don't have any arguments over the television. In fact, I, I switch all her favourite programmes on just for having the pleasure of switching them off again. <laughs> I'm just going to pop and get the ironing board. I'm running short of shirts. Right. <laughs> you know what, James? I bet you were a marvel for your age. I'm a marvel for a man 20 years younger. But I've always, I've always, I've always been handy about the house, you see. Yeah. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's being an old sweat that does it, you see. Yeah. Makes yourself reliant, you see. Well, I must be off, mate. I'm not as lucky as you. My missus are raised cake. I'm home late for dinner. <laughs> she's had dinner. Yes. 
Uh, what? Uh, well, what? you know what women are about meal times. Yes, but uh, what? Uh, Five what? minutes late. You think it was the end of the world? Yes, but. Uh, <laughs> what are you having for dinner? Oh, I don't know. I have a roast pork. Roast pork, yes. With loads of crispy crackling and oh. apple sauce. Oh my god. <laughs> Or it could be roast beef and Yorkshire pudding. Oh. You know, I've got to hand it to my missus. Yes. She makes a marvellous Yorkshire. Yeah. Puts it under the joint and lets the gravy drip into oh. it. <laughs> what are you having for afters? I well, know. Apple pie and whipped cream, I suppose. Nothing special. Oh, no. no. Suppose I could ask you to come home and have dinner with us. Oh, well, that's very nice of you. on the other hand, knowing you, James, you don't want to sit and listen to my missus going all about her sister's new baby, do you? No. No. Of course, I'm very interested in new babies, you know. I, uh... Well, don't worry, I'll let myself out. Yes, right. <laughs> By the way, what's the little darling's name? Be seeing you, James. Thanks for the beer. You're welcome. Welcome to a broken leg, you overstuffed bird. <laughs> Well, so am I, you feathered twit. <laughs> Where did I leave that shirt now? Uh, yeah, wait a minute, I had a boiled kipper last night. <laughs> then I came in here and... Very tasty when it's dry now. <laughs> Smells of the sea. <laughs> Wheels. Oh, curry in a hurry, eh? <laughs> what can I do for you, then? Well, one of your neighbours tells me your daughter's away and you're doing for yourself. Oh, yes. So I thought you might like one of our hot dinners. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, what is it? Uh, something special today. Oh, yes. Uh, roast pork and crackling, followed by apple pie and custard. Oh. <laughs> yes, well, I was doing a little something for myself, oh. but uh, seeing as you're so, uh, so kind... <laughs> no, not at all. Your time of life, one must look after the old tummy, you know. <laughs> My time of life? Yes, really, you can't cope on your own. You're just like children. Get out of here. Beg your pardon. Go on, clear off and take the carry with you on my time of life. The cheek, I've got to look after myself, I think. <laughs> my time of life. Flaming <laughs> cheek. <laughs> Roast pork and apple sauce. Oh, Lempwick, you've done it again. All right, I know you're own. <laughs> All right. Oh, it's my rice pudding. <laughs> oh, yeah. Where's my recipe book? Oh, you see, you silly old fool, it's four ounces, not pounds. <laughs> something burning. <laughs> what for dinner? What for dinner? You are if you're not careful. <laughs> oh, Lil, Lil, come home to your old dad. 
I promise I'll be good to that layabout husband of yours. Anyone else? Oh, thank you, Lord. <laughs> Lily, here, Lily. Oh, it's you, Mrs. Ward. Hello, Mr. Lambwick. Yes. I've just had a phone call from Lily. Oh, yes. When's she coming back? Well, when they got your card saying you were looking after yourself a treat, they decided they'd stay another week. Uh, yes. <laughs> She's on to the queen. I didn't wake you up at dinner time. You look so peaceful. Well, is that new electric blanket, love? Makes all the difference. <laughs> oh, that's a lovely cup. I'll finish it in a minute. Hello, love. How you getting on? Coming along. Oh. Oh, I say. Oh, that is good. We only want another six feet, love. Don't want to break any ankles on the way out, do we? Must be joking. How <laughs> get on, love? Can I have a taste? Mmm. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Needs a bit more body, love. Put in another tin of metal polish. Oh. <laughs> now, how's our little Rembrandt getting on? Oh, I think I got it right this time. Oh, good, love. Let's have a look. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Look out, here comes Mucky Leo. Oh, blimey, come on, get everything away. Get everything away as quick as you can. Hurry up now. Quick, hurry up, hurry up. Right, everybody ready? Right. right, off we go. Now then, in case of fire, these buckets are put here for your protection. And... Oh, hello, ma'am. I've just given the girls a bit of fire drill. Well done, Dora. Keep them on their toes. Certainly. Pity we haven't got more villains like you in this nick to make my job a lot easier. Got a new one for you. Oh. Come along in. <laughs> Look after her, Dora. I certainly will. Well, well, well. What a desperado. <laughs> what sinful crime did you commit to be brought within these hallowed walls, dear? I'm innocent. Oh. Aren't we all? <laughs> it was all a mistake. Tell Dora. Well, I was in this shop, see, and mm. absentmindedly I shoved this clock up my jumper. Oh. <laughs> Happens all the time, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, I was just leaving the shop and uh -huh. the store detective, he come up to me and he said, what is that bulge under your coat? Uh -huh. So I said, I'm in a certain interesting condition. <laughs> oh, good thinking, good thinking, yes. And just at that moment, the ruddy clock gave out with the Westminster chimes. <laughs> You should have told him the father was Big Ben, love. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Fancy a cup of tea? Oh, yeah, Tom. Come on, then. <laughs> Two teas, please, Clarice, love. Um, yes. may I ask, what are you in here for? Well, you may, but I'm not going to tell you. But here's your bra back again. <laughs> However did you get hold of that? Oh, just keeping me hand in. They don't call me Dora the Dip for nothing, you know. And the next time you go shopping, love, make sure it's a greengrocer's. Got a perfect hiding place here for a couple of plums. <laughs> I can't stand it any longer, Dora. No. Can I have a quick latch? Oh. Come on. <laughs> it's my last fag, but you never part. Come on. Ready? Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> That's enough. <laughs> Well, what do you expect for a puff? A flaming old cheek? Come on. 
Now, as you all knew it, I'm going to give you a preview. Oh. Now, this is known as Passion Corner. Is it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, I charge one cigarette for that one yeah. and five cigarettes for that one. <laughs> well, let's have a look. All right. <laughs> you ready? Yeah. Right. <laughs> oh, yeah. I like him. He's got a lovely voice. <laughs> Who cares about his voice? <laughs> now, I'm not going to look at this one. No. Ah, <laughs> oh, well, I'm sure he's ever such a nice gentleman, but he's not what I would call sexy. Oh, that's the old idea. For five fags, you have a look at that and push you off thinking about it for a couple of days. <laughs> Look out, she's here again. Oh, oh, she again. Oh. Good girls. I'm afraid I've got some bad news for you. Mrs. Blunston will be unable to come tonight to give her little talk on non-ferrous metals and the relative strength of pre stretch concrete. Oh, 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 yes, don't I hate be, that. Don't be too disappointed. Fortunately, Mr. Blanson has volunteered to fill the gap by showing you a few of his conjuring tricks. Oh, oh nice. nice! This way, Mr. Blanson. Oh. Uh, should there be anything you want, just ask Dora. She'll look after you. Good evening, ladies all. Good evening. Good evening. I would like to start by showing you a little illusion from the mystic East. It's called the egg and the bag. I place the egg in the bag like that and pronounce the magic words. Abrac... Abrac... Stand back a bit, ladies. Please give the magician a chance. <laughs> Go on in here. Come in, Paula, old girl. Thank you, Charles. Do you know, I must confess, I was finding that party an absolute bore until I was introduced to you. Yes, you naughty boy. Right. I noticed you took the first opportunity of getting us both out of it. <laughs> well, I wonder how many unsuspecting females have been lured into this masculine lair. Well, you wouldn't like it if I was the kiss and tell type, would you? <laughs> Come and sit down, darling. Have a snifter. <laughs> any, uh, any particular time you have to be home? Well, no, not really. Roger's away in Singapore. Oh, is he really? <laughs> Jolly old Roger. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, there we are, darling. Green car. <laughs> <laughs> I mustn't drink too much. <laughs> well, it makes me dizzy, and then I want to lie down. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> well, uh, have the other half. <laughs> You know, you really are the most attractive little thing. Am I, Charles? Mm. <laughs> Charles, yeah? there's a woman at the other end of the sofa. Is it, darling? Who oh, is it? It's only the wife. What? <laughs> What's the matter? Is it something I've said? And write it something you said. What's she doing here? Well, she lives here. <laughs> well, not exactly here, huh? Over there. Yeah. But how can you carry on like this with her watching? She's not watching, darling. Why, mm -hmm. you see? Well, Charles, yeah. she's not deaf and dumb, is she? Good Lord, no. You give her somebody to talk to, and she yaks away nights into the dust. Why, <laughs> well, you just don't understand this. Oh, darling, it's obvious. I mean, we're, we're, uh, we're, we're living apart. You're not. You're living together. Well, 
we're living apart together. <laughs> See, we had this terrible row five years ago. I suppose it was my fault, really, and... Uh, Why? Well, uh, you see, uh, she wanted this mink for her birthday, and I bought her one. Well, what was wrong with that? Well, the blasted thing bit her. <laughs> and the, the whole thing sort of came to an end. You know, we sort of live our own lives and go our own way. Well, then why didn't you just get a divorce? Well, couldn't do that, darling. Couldn't afford to. You see, the dotty aunt of hers left us the house and 10,000 a year between us so long as we stayed married. And that's how it's gone on. She stays on her side and I stay on mine. <laughs> do you mean... Do you mean to say that the whole house is like this? Two of everything? Well, not exactly everything. I mean, there's only one bathroom. It's a frightful bore. How do you manage about that? Well, on the rare occasions that we sort of want to use it both at the same time, I have to have the end with the plug hole. <laughs> How bizarre. Ah, good. Now we can get on with it. Well, what do you think you're doing? What's happening now? Her uh, boyfriend's arrived. Boyfriend? <laughs> Tony! Where on earth have you been? I'm sorry, darling. I couldn't get away from the hospital. Uh, an emergency appendix blew up and I had to whip it out. <laughs> He's always whipping things out that way. <laughs> Poor darling. Come and sit down. You must be exhausted. <laughs> if she runs true to form, he'll be exhausted before the evening's out. I'll be... <laughs> I know what's coming now. You look lovely tonight, darling. You look lovely tonight, darling. <laughs> you are, you silly twit. <laughs> Tony, is everything all right for next weekend? They're popping down to Brighton. Well, darling, I hate to tell you this. They're not popping down to Brighton. <laughs> uh, but the wife insists on dragging me up to her mother's. Probably by his hair. <laughs> terribly henpecked. Now, look here, I thought you said we were going to be alone tonight. But, darling, we are alone. We're blasted well not. What about them? Whatever goes on next door is nothing to do with us. Right, 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 right. You know, I always say the wife's never a bit nosy. It's lovely. I'm beginning to think you're insane. How can you possibly carry on with this ridiculous life? Oh, you'll soon get used to it, darling. When you pluck up courage and come and live with me. Oh, that's a good idea. How about moving here while Roger's away? Huh? <laughs> that's enough. I can't stand any more. Tony! Oh! I'm sorry, Kate. This is goodbye. Oh, thank heavens he's gone. I never could stand that fella. But he's right. What? You're both absolutely crazy, the pair of you. I'm going. <laughs> well, I'm deaf. What a waste of an evening. Oh, Tony. <laughs> I wonder. Hello. Hello, it's me. Oh, long time no see. Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing tonight? Nothing. Well, how about getting together? Mm, sounds fun. <laughs> Your place or mine? Well, we uh, don't want the neighbours gossiping, do we? Better make it the spare room. So, there we are, chaps. It looks as if we've got the enemy on the run. Yes. It goes without saying that I should expect you to keep up the pressure. Yes. Now, any questions? No, sir. No questions, sir. All right, well, good luck to you. And to you, very good luck. And up for a ruddy shrug! Oh, dear, oh, dear. Oh, do I see your faces then? I bet a chill ran through you. Like the bigger sister when her elastic broke. <laughs> Peter, who the devil is this fellow? This is the uh, gentleman who owns this farm, sir. Ah, ah. So you're the gap that's charging us twenty pounds for the use of your barn, eh? That's right. I'm very glad to see you're still enjoying playing soldiers. <laughs> we are not playing at soldiers, sir. Oh. This is a very serious exercise which could one day affect the safety of the whole country. Here, yeah. yeah, yeah, sir. I see you've already had a casualty. Oh, what do you mean? Well, one of your fellows in the sheepskin coat, he was crawling about my paddock. And my old Tom, my old fire man, he claps his eye on him, you see. He's blind as a bat, old Tommy. Oh, go on, man, go on. <laughs> well, what do you can say, Charles on St. Peter? He sheared him, shoved him in the sheep dip, and painted a blue cross on his bum. <laughs> Sheepskin coat, sir. Uh, it, it, it sounds like the brigadier. I'll tell you something else, he'll never suffer from foot and mouth. <laughs> <laughs> 
That is what you'll suffer if it was the Brigadier. Yeah? How'd you like to get out of my bar? Now look here, it looks my like man. Rain, sir. I, um, <clears throat> I apologise. That's all right, me old cock. Message from Brigade for you, sir. Ah, uh, thank you. Now, uh, perhaps you'll excuse me. Certainly, you carry on with your war. <laughs> yes, well, uh, I've got rather a lot to do as well. That's all right, my lord. Hey, tell me, what's that thing called that you get all that money out of? The contingency fund. Well, I, I need another dip in that. Oh, what for? <laughs> On account of my hands. What about them? Well, every time your fellas let off a big bang, my flaming hands lay eggs. <laughs> Surely that's what hens are supposed to do. Not from ten foot up in the air, it ain't. <laughs> <laughs> my bag yard's looking like a flaming omelette. <laughs> Now, what's the trouble? I won't pay for my eggs. The devil you were haggling about eggs for, Peter. You've got a battle to win. Pay the fella. Oh, very well, sir. Uh, that old old contingency fund do not come in handy, does it? Uh, thank you. Come thank here, you. Peter. Hey. Now, Brigade want me to secure this road here. Now, I propose to send one of D Company platoons across that field there. Oh, that field there? Yes, that field there. Oh, you'll never make it. You don't know my man. You don't know my bull. <laughs> my men are trained to tackle anything. When it comes to tackle, my bull's got your men beat a mile. <laughs> Would you kindly leave us, sir? All right, if you don't want the benefit of my local knowledge. Yeah. He's got a point, you know, sir. What? Oh, damn it, yes, you're probably right. Oh, all right, Mr. Fritton. Uh, let's see if we can find a way around your bull. Right, right, right. Now... Supposing I was to push me chaps up that road there. That road there, sir? Yes. You'd never make it. And why not? Because that road's a river. <laughs> <laughs> Message for you, sir. Oh. <laughs> By Jove, Peter, I think this is it. You've got the blighted. Any reconnaissance, a pinprick the uh, enemy positions on our front here, here, and here. I say, sir, that's just the information we needed. Well, that's about a lot, as I say, said when the bacon factory the burnt down. <laughs> Will you kindly leave us, Mr. Fitt? All right, I'll shut my mouth and I'll shut that door and leave you to carry on with your war. I'd be very much obliged. Right. Now, Peter, let's have a look at this. <laughs> God, now we really are in trouble. So's my sister. <laughs> Come here, Lulu. Who's responsible for that? Responsible for what? Put a that soppy grin on her face. <laughs> her hasn't looked like that since she went blackberrying with the postman's son. How dare you make these ridiculous insinuations? She's been got at, and I demand compensation from that there contingency pod. <laughs> Look here, Mr. Fitton, I've just about heard enough of you. You've done everything you can to ruin the work of this headquarters. But we'll win this battle in spite of you. I'll lay you two to one, you don't. What? Done. Ten pounds. Come on, Peter, put some money on. I'll there have a uh, 50p, sir. <laughs> You'll have a fiver. You've got to get that contingency fund money back, sir. Right, right, well, I'll hold the stakes. You're right. right. Let's have another look at that blasted map. Now. Uh, All right, Lulu. Let her go. Bombs away. <laughs> I got rid of the opposition for it. That'll be 20 pounds. <laughs> well done. Well done. Right, if the Navy would like to have a go, they're welcome to use my duck pond. I don't mind. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> well, that's it once again. I hope you liked it. If so, see you all again next week. Bye. <laughs>